What's happening guys? I'm your host BliskinX and welcome back to another awesome Unity tutorial. We're going to be picking up again today with regards to some enemy movement, some movability. We covered this over on our last video. Go and check that out just to give some life to the to the game that we're creating in the sense that we just show you we had this guy wanting to follow us and today we're going to be working on some enemy pathfinding. Now what that means is if we want to work with patrolling essentially we want this guy I've just gone ahead and cloned him and renamed him to path slime for the demonstration for this demonstration. If we want to go ahead and create plots where we can then essentially have him patrol prior to him having line of sight this is what that tutorial is going to be. We will obviously add the line of sight towards this tutorial, um, probably the next tutorial, but today we're going to be working primarily on the pathfinding, getting him to basically patrol the streets or the dungeons in this case. So the first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and add a empty object and I'm going to go ahead and rename that to hotspot. Okay, that's where we know that this is essentially our moving points to which this enemy is going to move to. What I'm going to go ahead then is also just click on here and change it and give that a little bit of a, you could say, this empty object a little, you could say a, to some color so that we know exactly where it is. And then I'm going to go ahead and just move that about so that we know um, where we want it. And I'm going to go ahead and put, let's say, the first one there. Right. And then we'll go ahead and I'm going to basically duplicate this. So let's go ahead and duplicate. So let's make, let's go and make four of them just for this demonstration. Let's go and add one here that he needs to go to. Let's go back to, that was one. Let's go and add number, this one down here, maybe. And then the other one, let's go and add that over here. Fantastic. Okay, so yes, our four moving spots essentially, as you can see, this is where we want him to randomly go to these different positions. Okay, so that's going to be our starting course essentially um, in terms of the plotting. So the next thing we need to do is obviously go ahead and do what we did similar to the to the other one where we added the rigid body 2D as well as the box collider. Just remember, I've cloned this. So if you want to go see my my previous video, that you will have an understanding of what it is we did. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and cloned it, I need you to obviously then remove the script to it. You'll notice that on the slime one, we have the slime follow script. We're going to be creating a new script, so make sure that is obviously not there. So once you've done that, we can go ahead and click on add component. And I'm going to go ahead and just say new script. And I'm going to call this path finding. Let's go, let's do this. Go slime path finding. Right, let's go ahead and create add. And now that we've got it over here, we can go ahead and open it. Right, so there is our empty file. And now we can begin the coding process. So the first thing we're going to need to do is obviously add those public floats as well as a private float um, in this case. So I'm gonna go down here and drop in our floats. First one, as always, we're gonna be doing is our, um, our speed so that we know exactly to which the enemy is traveling. Uh, and we can set that accordingly as we go. So we're gonna do the speed first. The next one I'm gonna do is add a private float to wait time, uh, which is going to be our wait time between those points. So let's go ahead, and this is going to be obviously a hidden variable, so we won't set that. Uh, and then we're going to obviously have a public variable with regards to that as well between the two. So we'll check between those and our if statements. So let's go ahead and say public float, and we can call that start uh, wait time accordingly. Right, so we know how long he's got to wait, obviously, between the two. The next critical thing we need to do is add an array. Now, if you're not familiar with array, an array really holds multiple objects um, uh, in a single variable, and you'll see that we've got four current objects, so we're going to add that to one single array, and then working with the individual ones. So, all right, in other words, then looping through, we will just read through the array accordingly and uh, be able to know exactly where the enemy needs to go to. So, yeah, we're going to go public, and we're going to drop, obviously, that... Um, those you could say four hotspots in there so yeah we're going to go public and we're going to go transform you guessed it as very much like our old um, our previous video transform and then the array brackets obviously and we're going to make that hotspot Hot spots okay because those are the spots to which we're moving okay and then we need to just add a random spot obviously and that's going to be 
private int value because we want to random this the the number between that we don't want to let him go through a looping stage where we go one two three four we want him to randomly just choose one as, as please so yeah we're going to just go random int random uh, random let's just say spot right okay so now that we have our you could say five variables we can go ahead and start our our void start which is going to set the wait time so the wait time in here is going to be uh, which is our first variable which we created and that is going to be equal to the global variable that we get to not the global variable but the variable that we get to set so we go wait time wait time okay fantastic right so the next thing we want to basically go and do is set the random spot this in here this variable so we can go ahead and say random spot equals and then we need to work out the number that is random based on the number of in sort of items that's sitting in the array now currently the array is empty but we're going to fill that by dragging these four in there so before we do that we know that it's going to be four obviously so it's going to be a number between zero and four essentially but that code will look something like this we're going to go random dot range and then we're going to say uh, just close that off we're going to go say between zero and obviously the hotspot hotspots the array the array and then we say length because that's how we work out the length of the array the number in the array okay so we've got hotspot and that should just be length okay so that reads as follows obviously set the hotspot based on the range that is between zero and four which we're going to obviously fill shortly all right the next thing we can do is obviously set the player movement so yeah we're going to use the transition position again uh, we're going to go transition um transform sorry transform uh transform yeah we're going to obviously set the transform again so we can go transform dot position position uh, equals vector two and we're going to be using the move component move towards move towards towards and that is going to be very similar to what we did in our previous video which is going to be transform transform dot position the from position and we're going to move towards the hotspot hotspots um random spot position which is going to obviously be that number that we fill that is why it is a a a global um sort of an instance variable opposed to a static variable so we're going to say that and then we're going to say dot position so whatever one has been selected position and we're going to look for the speed obviously to get there and we're going to multiply it by the time delta delta time right so yeah we've got obviously setting the position for the for the enemy which is going to be its move towards the from position we have to calculate move towards the hotspot position uh, obviously random the spot that was selected and then setting the speed delta time x right so this theoretically if i'm going to go ahead and save this this should now move our character across i'm going to just quickly obviously click on the enemy here uh, make sure there's no errors which there looks like there isn't which is fantastic and we're going to go scroll down to our speed let's set the speed to two and the start wait time we can set to three and then we can basically fill the array so we can drag this across so we click on the path and we can drag it over into the array so if you see now it's got one and it's obviously got that so we can do the same with the others drag them across two now you can do this bulk but i'm just showing you that you can fill um, how the array is actually filled okay so there we can see there we've got our four little um, elements to this array right and before we run that we then obviously need to go ahead and set the set the the if statement to which if he's got into the position within a certain range now normally we use transform position for this but transform position i find is just not as accurate within a close range so what we're going to want to do here now effectively is obviously we've got this update uh, which we're going to leave uh, for that's to begin the movement but we're going to have to go and set a if statement so the if statement in other words for him to know that with this in this distance go and find the next one Okay, so yeah, we're going to go, because now currently he's only going to walk to one position in the array. So yeah, we're going to go if, and it's obviously always to start our if statements off correctly, and um, so that we know exactly what it's doing. And obviously I'm going to have an else, so in this case I'm just going to just do that. It's always just good practice coding, and then I know exactly that all the correct parameters are there. All right, so yeah, I'm going to go vector, which is the enemy, to dot distance. Uh, distance. 
because I'm checking the distance between him and that object now, obviously. Um, distance, and then I'm going to go the extra variable, which is going to be the transform dot position, 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 that's right, and between the hotspots, hotspots, uh, random, obviously, random spot, random, random spot as we've done there, random spot, and that is going to be its position, to which the first one was, position, position, and that will be, in this case, greater than 0.2f, okay, is what I'm going to be checking. Then, inside that if, uh, let's just close that up. Actually, we don't need the alphs. Yeah, I'm going to do a separate if. In fact, that'll be better for us. Okay, so yeah, we're then going to say, before we move him, if wait time, because we obviously want to make sure that he is he's waiting, uh, essentially. Yeah, we can run the else. Else, and I'll read through it to you carefully now. If wait time, which is that variable that we set, wait time, is in fact smaller or equal to zero in this instance go ahead and say random we'll just go random random spot is equal to random dot range of a number because we want to guess a new number because we assume it's only going to go to one number at present but i'll read it to you carefully and then we're going to basically just do, in fact, just to save time to show you, I can just go ahead and delete that and just copy this entire line. Because on start, it's guessing a number between zero and four. I wanted to do again when, um, when it basically uh, finds its position. So when it gets to this position within 0 0.2, go and set the new random number and the wait time is greater than zero. It's been waiting the wait time that we've set, which is three seconds, then go and set a new random um, and let the course take its place again. And then, yeah, we can do the else basically. We can just go wait time. Wait time is equal to, is minus equal to, sorry, minus equal to, and that would be time delta. Time. Time dot delta time. Fantastic. Okay. So let's read as follows. So yeah, currently we we go and get a random number between zero and four in this case, and we then set the first to which element he needs to go to. Right, then we perform the movement. This is the movement towards that position. But then when he gets there, the, in this case, if I take this out that I just added, he's only gonna go to that one position. So now we're saying, go to the different positions, wait three seconds, and then move to the next one. And that's what we're doing here. We're saying if the distance is greater than, in this case, than 0.2f based on this random spot, then go ahead, wait the time, if you've already waited, then create a new number, and then start walking again, essentially is what's going to happen, because this runs through. So we can go ahead and file save that. Right, so we're gonna go ahead and play that. Let me just show what that looks like. So I might just remove the box collider, if you don't mind, because I haven't set up the collision events correctly. So he'll just get stuck at some of these walls. So we wanna go ahead and obviously um, just let him, just test our code. To make sure it's working. So there you guys can see, he finds the first one, he then goes ahead and uh, pauses for the time wait that we've set here, uh, the three seconds, which is probably a little bit too long. He's now moving to the next one, and he's now obviously waiting there, and then he's going back to that, because that's obviously a random process that's taking place. So he's just selecting, like I said, we're randoming a number, and then he's moving across to those different ones. Right guys, so I hope you enjoyed it. So just to recap again on our script, we're going to obviously work being able to collisions maybe in our next tutorial, show you guys some, some different uh, enemy movements and then attacks. But yeah, effectively is basically getting to this, the different positions um, based on that pathfinding. I just want to recap on the code just to make you guys familiar with it. So yeah, we can see we set our five variables, we set our speed, the wait time, which is a private, which you don't see. We set the start wait time, which is the three seconds. We obviously fill that with the start wait time. We then random a spot between the range of zero and the number of perimeters, or we can say elements within the array. And in this case, I had four. So it randomly selects the number, 
We then go ahead and we begin the movement, which is the vector two move towards movement. And here we basically uh, say the from movement, which is the transform position to the hotspot position, random the hotspot position, obviously. And then we set the speed times delta. And then again, we go and do a few things where we say basically when you get to that position, go ahead and random a new number and then set the wait times again to the stop time. Right guys, so that is it for our tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're new to this channel, give us a subscribe. We always appreciate the love and a little thumbs up there. And we will catch you guys in the next one.